after the success of our first case, our name has sort of gotten out there, and we've been contacted by Franny Rollins, who needs our help investigating the death of her friend Ashley. In Franny's opinion, the police are not moving fast enough to solve that murder, and she has asked for our help. Let's see what we can do. Ashley Mendoza was a reporter in Copper Cliffs, and she wound up dead. Her friend Franny is very concerned because she doesn't think the police are doing enough to investigate, and she's asked us to help. There's not a whole lot we know other than Ashley, like I said, was a reporter, and she was working on a story having to do with um, campaigns and candidates running for mayor in Copper Cliffs. And that's really all up until this point that we do know. Like always, our episode starts out with a letter. Um, and this, I don't know if we're supposed to make something out of all of the notes and things written in the margins. Um, but detective, last month, my dear friend named Ashley Mendoza turned up dead in the restroom of the public library in Copper Cliffs, Arizona. The police haven't made any progress investigating her death wh whatsoever. It seems like they just don't care. I was working with Ashley on something she said was going to be really big. And now that she's gone, I want to look into her case myself. But unfortunately, my personal skill set doesn't include sleuthing. I need a pro. I need you. I work as an IT specialist for the mayor of Copper Cliffs, Thomas Ford Cross. Right now... TFC is in the middle of his re-election campaign against Harold Richards. TFC is running on a pro-environment, pro-local business platform. Harold's running on the platform that TFC is terrible at his job. To me, TFC first seemed like the perfect candidate, a decent and determined guy with a strong environmental stance. It took me less than two months of working for this campaign to realize that TFC had no plans to follow through on all of his big promises that I was naive enough to believe during his first race. I could have just quit, but I really want to expose TFC for what he's done or hasn't. This town deserves better than that, than what TFC can give. That's why I started working with Ashley. She cared about this town more than anyone I know. She was so passionate and righteous. She inspired me to try to make a real difference, not just sit back and complain. We began meeting up in parks and coffee shops weekly, me giving her info on TFC and everyone else within the campaign, her being a good listener and giving me good life advice. She helped me see that I was part of making a real change, and I was more than just an IT tech. She was more than just a press contact. She had become my friend. She was there for me when I had a rough day at work, even if the problem I was dealing with wasn't related to her story. I listened to her as she vented about dating apps. She even tried to get me to sign up for one. Nope. We got into debates about the best burrito in Copper Cliffs. She agreed about the best movie of all time, Sneakers. She was working on something big related to the election, but it was too early in the process for her to reveal more. She swore by maintaining her integrity and journalistic ethics she also didn't want to put anyone in any kind of danger, especially me or her sibling. And now she's gone, and no one will ever know what she was working on and isn't... Wait, now... And now she's gone, and no one will ever know what she was working on. And isn't that effing convenient? I believe Ashley got too close to some truth and paid the price. I want to find out what happened to Ashley, and I need you to help me. So far, I found at least one avenue that we can use to collect some evidence. Judith Richards. Judith is the head of Harold's campaign security. More importantly, she's a retired cop with plenty of close friends still on the force, and she really didn't like Ashy, Ashley. I would bet my pinky finger that Judith got access to dirt on Ashley's murder that hasn't been released to the public. She's also power hungry and very entitled. If we can get into Judith's, Judith's email account... I can dig around for any communication she's had with her cop buddies. We can see if there's any info on what happened to Ashley. 
if they were talking about it. The thing is, brute force hacking is risky, and as talented as I am, I prefer a non-traceable crime. Instead, I'd like you to use your sleuthing skills to help me figure out Judith's password. From what I understand, one of your specialties is piecing together people's life details to understand their motives. So, for you, this could be a walk in the park. I accessed the login portal to Judith's email page and pulled up the password hint she set up for herself. I've posted that, along with a link to Ashley's blog, onto a KeepSafe account I set up for us. I'm sending you a handful of documents so that you can get acquainted with the town and the major players of both campaigns. Also, so that you can get so that you can get a better idea of what Ashley was like, what she was working on, and how she died, I also searched for Judith's name in some public uh, county records and found something of interest. So... There we go. We have that with all of these notes written on us, uh, uh, on it. Um, and I looked, and I really didn't make anything. I was trying to figure out if there was a code or some sort of a something going on there, and there really, really wasn't. Um, and so I just sort of moved on from there. If we have a call back to that, that's fine. We can go back and take a look at it. One thing I've done, or I'm going to try to do in this series, um. And if people that have watched the first series hate it, I'll go back to doing it the way I did. But I'm trying to make these episodes not so long. So instead of meticulously going over every piece of evidence in the box, I'm only going to go over <clears throat> what it turns out has pertained to this case. And the other pieces of evidence that will probably be a callback in a later episode will take a deep dive on when we get that call back. I'll briefly review them here, but I'm not going to go in depth every episode on things that don't matter for what we need to do for that episode, if that's okay. And if people hate it, please leave a comment down below and tell me you want me to go back to the deep dive in depth on every piece of information, and I will do that. So having said all that, I think it's important that we just take a look at the obituary. Um, to set the mood and figure out, you know, what's really going on. Ashley Marie Mendoza, a lifetime resident of Copper Cliffs, was taken from us long before her time this past Wednesday night. A kind and caring soul from the moment she was born, Ashley spent much of her childhood helping her parents run their business, Mendoza's Flowers. As a child of florists, Ashley made sure that the apartment was shared with her siblings. The apartment she shared with her sibling was always blossoming with life, making a special point of raising as many asters as possible. I don't know what an aster is. I need to look that up. In her career as a journalist, Ashley was admired for her boldness, her determination, her passion, and her strong sense of civic duty. She was always hungry for the next story and never backed down from a challenge. When she felt as though the truth had to be known. Ashley is survived by her parents, Imelda and Raul, and her sibling, Reggie. The Mendoza family requests that anyone who wishes to pay their respects to Ashley prior to the official funeral service plant an aster, Ashley and her sibling's favorite flower, in her honor. A private family service will be held for Ashley next Tuesday at St. Barbara's Catholic Church. A formal funeral will be scheduled and announced at a later date. And then it just submitted by Reggie Mendoza. So now getting to the part where we just look at what is relevant to this part of the investigation. We have this, which is the key. We're supposed to get the password for Franny so that Franny can get into Judith Richards' email. So you are required to set a personalized password for your TFC campaign accounts. Remember to also set a password hint as well as to avoid contacting IT support in the event of forgotten password. To avoid severe security vulnerabilities, please follow these patterns when creating your personal password and personal password hint. Choose events or people that are important to you and are always on your mind. Example, birthday, password hint, event. Two, use a combination of words rather than using a single word. Example, Katie and Lizzie's birthday, hint, family event. Try to embed the chosen combination of words and corresponding numbers 
or symbols instead of characters. And then it's just Katie and Lizzie's birthday with uh, symbols put in place of letters that they closely represent. And then the hint is family event plus symbols. Uh, make the password long and a pin if needed. Longer password is more difficult to guess. Example, Katie, Lizzie birthday with, okay, with number, with the symbols and with numbers. Family event plus symbols and date. Do not reuse passwords. Do not write passwords down. Change your password regularly. Okay, so that just lays out the instructions for the best practices when writing a password. And even though we were sent this, it's from the TFC campaign, and we know that Judith Richards works with the Harry Richards campaign. However, this is just setting up from an IT person the best way to write a password so that we have something to go by. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to look at Judith's password hint. The password you have entered is incorrect. This is when Franny got to her email and typed that in. So the hint that we've been given for Judith's password is children plus symbols plus work gears plus home which is easy enough to remember. So let's go to, before we jump back into the slides, let's go uh, to where we found the answer to um, Judith's year on the force. And there were a bunch of different documents that things that mentioned that Judith was a police officer but in, in the blog, Judith wrote an article um, about the mayor saying that he had a child out of wedlock, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the bottom, um, in the comments, Rick Cobb says, Judith, Judith's got 11 years on the forest under her belt. I might listen if I were you. So as far as the question of work years, we have that answer right there. It's 11. So then the next thing we want to get to is I've screwed this up. The campaign flyer and in the campaign flyer in the section where it says lifelong cliffer although harry and his wife judith have two beautiful children of their own the lovely harriet and the ever rambunctious jude so now we have that question answered we have the name of the kids we have plus symbols Plus year on the years on the at work or on the force or whatever the the thing was, which was eleven, and then the last thing we have is plus home. If we look at this incident report, and I'm going to read this incident report because it's it comes into play later on. I'm sure it's from Ashley, and it's an injunction against harassment against Judith Richards. And the first thing we need to notice is the address, 13 Yellow Hyacinth Avenue, Copper Cliffs, Arizona. Uh, uh, specify your relationship to the defendant. Previous journalistic subject. And then they want her to list her harassment claims. The first instance was a comment Mrs. Richards wrote on my uh, professional blog about two months ago i am a journalist and in a comment on one of my articles she mentioned she would take drastic measures against me and that was the blog that we looked at the comments below and got her years of work the next instance um took place a month ago on the street outside of 
Mendoza's uh, florist, I was visiting my parents, the store's owners, and when I left the store, I found Mrs. Richards outside waiting for me. She demanded I remove the story she had previously commented on, and when I refused, she uh, stated that she did not want to escalate the situation, but that I was making making a lack of escalation difficult for her. I then re-entered Mendoza's flowers and waited for her to leave, which took about 45 minutes. The most recent uh, instance occurred about an hour ago. Mrs. Richards charged towards me and nearly hit me on the street outside of Coppercliff's Country Club while shouting insulting names at me. I remember uh, a member of Harold Richards' security team had to stop her from hitting me. So, is there currently or has there been any path, any court cases or legal other legal proceedings that involved her? So, no, no prior cases, however, I would like to put forth that, for the record, that Mrs. Richards was a well-known police officer for many years, and she or her colleagues could have easily intimidated any other potential harassment victims from taking legal action if they chose to do so. Mrs. Richards has access to firearms and many years of experience using them. It is very well within her ability to physically harm me, and as of your last two interactions, I believe that it may be her intention to further physically escalate the situation. So that is just the report um, that Ashley filed with the police department. And the only thing that we need it for in this case is the 13th Hyacinth Avenue, Coppercliffs, Arizona, because that is the plus home portion of the password key. So back to this. We have Harriet and Jude. We have 11 years as a cop. And we have 13 Yellow Hyacinth Avenue. And when you start to work it out, and you do Harriet and Jude with the symbol replacement, and it actually pretty much tells you the symbols to use for the particular letters. It's almost like solving a code. It's a substitution, basically. So we get H, ampersand, R, R, exclamation point, 3 as an E, T, and symbol, J, U, D, three as an E and then one, one for years as a cop and one, three for 13 yellow Hyacinth Avenue. And I will tell you, I had to try this code several times um, because at first I had Harriet and Jude. And then I had 11 in their right, but then I had 13 yellow Hyacinth lane, then just yellow Hyacinth Avenue or, and so I probably tried about, eight or nine combinations and the odd thing was it seemed to me or maybe just the way my computer was working but after i tried a couple of combinations it wouldn't take anything so i had to keep closing out the the dashboard and going back into it um but got it all solved as Harriet and Jude, 1113. That's the full code. That plus that plus that all as one big long word as passwords tend to be. Um, so then, after that, we got, I'm in. That was the right password, obviously. Thank you. I know you could help. Let's see what we've got here. Campaign event logistics. Lunch recipes. Nothing about Ashley. Oh, this could be something. And then, further down. Looks like Judas still has access to the police evidence database. Very unethical of her. Very useful for us. Up for helping me out with an, one more hack? If you figure out Judas' password to the CCPD's database, we can get our hands on all kinds of evidence that we'd never see otherwise. Send me the password to the police database as soon as you figured it out. This could blow things wide open. And so, and I like these. I like these when... You think you're done. You, uh, We had this happen, I think, once in the previous case. You thought you were done. You gave the answer. And instead of it being over, she came back with, hey, we need, um, we need to do this now. So when 
where it says Judith email here. If you clicked on that, that just took you to this, which was a little thread where she's asking her her police officer friend for some help um, with the password. And so it gives her a username, and then it says, for the password, place the candidates on last Friday's locations, connect the dots, passwords at the middle. Okay. So we need to figure out where the candidates were last Friday, and then just draw a line between the two, and whatever that line intersects is the name or the, the password. Fair enough. So in the box, there was a magazine article or a magazine page that was ripped out that just gave a little bit of background about um, both candidates, where they were from, or not where they were from as much as what neighborhood they were from, how they grew up together, how they used to be friends, now they're not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then this section over here, event schedule, I blew up because if you go down here and... The thing said, last Friday's location. So, monthly campaign rally, second Friday every month, Acorn Heights. So, Harold was at something Acorn Heights on Friday. Whereas, Thomas was at St. Saint, Saint Barbara's Fish Fry on Friday. So now we know where both candidates were. If we go to the map, and I just want to show you, Acorn Heights was, what, 17? Acorn Heights High School. That's the only Acorn Heights listed on here. So my assumption was that Acorn Heights High School was the right answer. And then TFC was at St. Barbara's Church, which is right there. So drawing an arrow between the two, that takes you to Blythe Bistro. And so back in messages, sending the message to Franny that it was Blythe Bistro. You are a genius. Time to see what the cops have got on Ashley's case. Oh, lots of useful stuff here. The police could have done more with this. Should have done more with this. Here's the preview. Apparently, this note was found in Ashley's pocket when they when they found her. If Ashley was interested in the country club, that means we should be too. I'm going to poke around and hopefully collect some evidence. I'll send you everything I've got uh, once I've got enough that seems worthwhile. I'm also going to write a little update on Ashley's blog, so watch the space. So, the note that was found in Ashley's pocket is just this right here. And it says, Ash... Leaving for the country club to make sure the water station gets set up and make sure Erica drops off the signs this time. There's a pork patty breakfast sandwich in the fridge with your name on it. Currently, I wrote it in ketchup. See you there. Once once you're done with the investigation, investigative reporting, swing by the front of, of the building to protest with us, or at least to cover it. There's always something that happens that makes a good click clack video you're on dinner duty tonight by the way love you reg and we know that reggie is her brother um and so apparently her and reggie and we know that from something else that she was roommates with her brother reggie uh from the obituary um and so the major part of the episode is done We've cracked her personal email, uh, Judith's personal email. We've, we've got the password. We cracked that. And then we got Judith's access password to the police database. And so we've told Franny everything we know. Franny is done. She's on to gathering evidence for the next box. So we are done with this part of the investigation now let's briefly scan over the rest of the stuff in evidence um, that we from this box and see what else there was. So there was a, this article is the back of the obituary and it just talks about a protest outside of the country club um, 
because there's a new business called Valdivan um, that's up to something, and we don't really know the full story yet. We just know Valdivan's there. People are protesting Valdivan, and we don't know what's going to come of that. This is just Thomas Ford Cross's campaign campaign flyer. Just bio on him, people quotes of people saying what a great guy he is. Nothing really to talk about there yet. This was the inside of we we saw Harry's campaign flyer. Well, it folded out like a map, and this was on the back side. Um, which is why it's sort of separated. I had to take two pictures and, and or scan it twice and put it together. This is the notebook. And we're going to... So... I'm trying to... There's an article on Ashley's blog. And it talks about... Let me wait till we get there. These are just all pages in the notebook. And the reason we're not really paying attention to them yet is they're not pertinent, except for I want to go to the ex-con up in the top right corner. Louis Vanzetti, responsible for the crash that killed Wilkes and King. And I don't want to get too deep into it yet. Um, all I'm going to say is I believe that we are going to discover through the course of this investigation that Louis Vanzetti indeed was not responsible for the crash that killed Wilkes and King. And they were two young girls um, who were riding in a car and supposedly Louis Vanzetti was driving and Harry Richards was in the passenger seat. The two girls were in the back seat. <clears throat> they, they were drunk. They went off the road, hit a tree or something, and the two girls in the back seat died. And Vanzetti went to jail for prison for 10 years for manslaughter and drunk driving and something else. What I think we're going to find out is that Vanzetti was not driving the car, that Harry Richards was driving the car, and Vanzetti covered for him. That's what I believe is going to come of that. And then the very, but we'll see. That's why I'm not really diving into that too deep yet because that may be a whole episode or part of an episode. So I don't want to really, I don't want to look too hard at that. That's just kind of the feeling I get. So then in the very back of the notebook, there are a couple of pages that sort of let us know what the codes are. They're, they're hints helping you figure out how to crack some of the codes. One of them being the shift cipher, which we already know. Um, the substitution cipher kind of sort of what we did with the password in a in a, a way um and then the misspelling cipher which is something i've never seen and so that may be interesting when we get to that and then one of the last things i want to look at is what came in the envelope and it turns out that this creepy bobblehead that i really kind of like is Harry Richards. That's supposed to be Harry Richards, the bobblehead. And then the two campaign pins that were in it. So most of the Hunter Killer boxes that I get, I keep everything in the box. I keep it all together. I don't write on any of it. If I have to take notes, if I have to write, I write it aside um, just to keep the integrity of the items in the box. This bobblehead right here is sitting on my desk. I took it out of the box. It's not going back into the box. I'm going to keep it out on my desk next to my computer forever because I like him. And anyhow, so Ashley Mendoza, what we do know now is that she was a reporter. She died in the bathroom at the library. We don't have a cause of death yet. And we know that she was investigating something at the country club. We know that she was investigating Harry Richards because he fathered a child out of wedlock when he was up in Toronto at, at rehab. We didn't discuss the Toronto and the rehab because it wasn't important for this case. And once again, I'm trying to cut out a lot of the things and only discuss what's pertinent 
for the particular episode. Um, so Ashley was investigating Harry. She was investigating Thomas Ford Cross because he doesn't keep his campaign promises. She was investigating some shenanigans at the country club with that company, Valvedon, Val, Valvita. What is the name of this company? Valdivian. I'll have to try to remember that. So that's where we are. We're now waiting for the next box to arrive. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If anybody has any comments, questions, concerns, or criticisms, please feel free to uh, leave them down below. And if you hate the way this investigation was presented and would rather me go back to the way where I investigate every single clue in the box and we discuss it, please let me know that also. Having said that, I'd like to tell everybody once again, thanks for watching and have a great week.